Hello, uh, this is Juan Balmori here. I have an Outlook update for you guys. I want to talk about two things here in the last few minutes of the call. Uh, one thing that I want to share with you is the Mailbox 1.12 uh, scope defined. So basically, that's the next release of Outlook Addins uh, APIs. And then I want to give you an update. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions about the REST decommission up. Uh, and you know, I want to make sure that you guys know the latest here, as well as answering a few of your questions. Oh, your many questions, by the way. All right, so Mailbox 1.3, the, the release of Mailbox 1.12 is imminent. Uh, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of what's coming in that uh, scope. So basically, Mailbox 1.12 is going to be around two big features no, that we're going to be including in 1.12. Uh, the first one is Smart Alerts. Uh, we have been talking about this in many sessions, actually. Uh, a couple of months ago, we had Sam here doing a demo of, of one example of Smart Alerts. I'm going to give you more examples here, but Smart Alerts is the first big item that is included in Mailbox 1.12. And the second one is we're going to have new, new auto run events. You know, the, the, we have two new Compose events. Today, back in Mailbox 1.12, we shipped, you know, the auto run events that you could actually, you know, run code when a message is composed. Uh, but we ship back then uh, on new compose message or on new appointment organizer. That event only was triggered when you created a brand new email or when you were replying or forwarding a message. But for example, if you if you started the composition of a message and you closed, you know your compose your compose experience, you get a draft, no, a draft uh, email stored in your mailbox, and then. The problem with that event is that when you reopen the item again from drafts, the event was not triggered. No, uh, that's why we call it on new message. Well, we are going to have a couple of events shipped as part of 1.12 that are going to be dealing the draft case. No, that you can use them to to add code when when you know when when a draft is opened. But evidently, you know, the big the big feature really is smart alerts. We were able to squeeze, you know, a couple of more events here. But smart alerts, for those of you who haven't heard it, it's basically part of event based also. Uh, it's an event that actually gets triggered when a user clicks send on an email or an appointment. Um, this is a very common pattern in a uh, very requested pattern in Outlook. You know, because many things happen when people send emails, no? So you want to add some logic to validate content, to verify, you know, that, uh, that for example, you're including an agenda in, a, in an appointment that's, you know, pro properly classifying content. There are millions of scenarios here, no? So we have on message send and on appointment send events. Um, and by the way, this is something that we shipped previously. We're making a few changes. Uh, we were not allowing send the item send. For some of you know that we shipped a long time ago an item send event, and that we are not allowing add-ins that are implementing that event in the store for many reasons. But the main reason is that the add-in is unavailable, then the, the, the user cannot send emails. No? So that was a very hard kind of uh, way of blocking the send of an email. Uh, and that's why we decided to ship this. It's really an improvement of, of that feature that you can now split. You know, if you want to handle the event on message send, for messages or appointments, and of course, we will never not allow users from sending emails. So if your admin is unavailable, they will have an option to to send it. No. Uh, the the news here is that you know the feature is in preview in Windows and now it's also uh, available in in OWA. And so if you go to Outlook Web. I look for the web, um, you're going to be able to, to use this feature. And the other good news is that they will be accepted in the store. So just uh, to show you quickly what you can do here. Uh, let me show you one more slide here. You now, what's key, you need to modify, modify the manifest of your Outlook adding to indicate that you will support the message send or an appointment send. And basically, it's the same as the other launch events. You, Type the name of the event and then the handler that it's going to be called in your code when that event happens. Now, one one thing that is different specifically for these two events is that you can have a mode. As you can see, there's another attribute on the XML that you can choose the mode you want to be blocking emails. No, and basically you have three options here. We have prompt user. Prompt user is the scenario where 
you want to, to give a recommendation to the user. You're blocking the send of the email because you want to provide a recommendation. And basically what this means is that we are going to provide a send anyway option. So you're going to be able to say, for example, hey, I would recommend you to add, for example, an agenda item. Let me show you a quick demo here of how this works. If I create a new appointment, and let's say that I am sending this blank appointment right here, but when I click on send, my, my you know, my event, it's very fast, but it's going to get triggered and it's going to say, hey, this email is blank. Do you want to add an agenda item? And as you can see, I have two options here. I can click don't send and add the agenda, or, you know, I can just send anyway. It's just, it's just a recommendation. In this case, this is using the prompt user option, right? And then we have soft block, and soft block, that's the mode you want to use when you want a mandatory change. So it's basically something that it's so important that the user needs to change it that you wouldn't allow them to kind of send the email. So there will not be a send anyway option. It would just be like, go back and fix the email and send it again. So in some scenarios, this makes sense, no? Uh, one exception to this is the if your add-in is unavailable. For whatever reason, if we cannot reach your add-in, then the user will be able to send anyway. And I want to show you one, this is super important behavior because this is different from what we, how we previously used to work with the old event. So let's say for a second that I have this email right here, and then this one, uh, this demo is actually simulating that the, the add-in is not reachable. No? So when I click on send, what's gonna happen is that, you know, we're gonna try to, you know, run your code, but the, the add-in is unavailable. So what's gonna happen here is that we are gonna be showing you this dialogue, right? And we're gonna, we're gonna give you an acknowledgement that we cannot reach, you know, your add-in, and then basically uh, you can choose to send anyway. So that is kind of essential for us to allow add-ins to be shipped to the store. If you are using either prompt user or soft block, your add-in is going to be allowed in the store. Uh, there's a third option, which is block, that behaves exactly as the item send event we shipped a long time ago. You know, that it's like, this is mandatory changes, and they are so mandatory, they are so important that the block of the email, that even if, if the add-in is not available, it's okay, you know, to not send the email. This is also for some extreme situations that could happen, no? But, uh, all right, so... That is coming in, mailbox 1.12, the release is imminent again, and you can try today in, in, if you were using these items in preview in Windows, now you can also do it in in NOAA. Uh, you can try all this as well, right? So that's going to be the mailbox 1.12 scope, and we are going to give you more updates of the release uh, very soon. Now, let's go switch gears here to that the commission outlook the rest api the commission that we're going to have no the context here for all of the i've been talking about this a lot in the last months i'm going to give you updates every time i can but basically for those of you who don't know you know back in february we were sharing that in november 30 2022 you know the rest api team you know the the guys who own the outlook rest endpoint uh it's going to be decommissioned right so this impacts both exchange online and exchange on-prem as well, if you are in a hybrid environment. So you are in a mixture of on-prem and the cloud as well. 100% on-prem, uh, it's not using REST, so it doesn't have REST services, no? The scenarios impacted, I'm, I'm putting here a code snippet. So if you have a code snippet that looks like this, <laughs> well, basically when you are creating, a, you're using the REST URL property, uh, and you're particularly using the V2 API endpoint, that's basically uh, it's going to stop working eventually, you know. So that is super important. Uh, obviously, we want people to be moving to the graph API, you know. So the latest here is that we have good news to share. We already told you uh, months ago that you know uh, we're going to be granting exceptions to add-ins because right now we don't have a good story to to be moving to the graph. And that basically means that until Office 2019, which is where basically when we ship. After our Office 2019, we shipped the support for single sign-on. So the idea is that all Outlook add-ins who are using the REST API, we're going to be granted an exception to keep using the REST API until end of extended support of 2019, which basically means end of around October 14th of 2025, right? And then uh, the news here is that uh, what, right now we are working with the REST team and actually found 
a way to identify the traffic that it's coming from Outlook Addends. So right, we, this is we're currently testing it. Remember that we were creating this allow list of app IDs that we were going to be allowing to get exceptions. Well, now the approach has changed a little bit. And basically what we're trying to do here is to automatically detect the traffic coming from Outlook Addends. And if that's the case, then all add-ins are going to be are going to be allowed even after uh, the November 20 the, the November decommission date until end of support of 2019. So basically, you'll have from now until 2025, you know, to to move your add into the graph. And we're going to be providing more APIs so that that's simpler. Right now, uh, if you submit it, I back in February I was submitting this form that you can use to actually go and send us your details about your add-ins in case you want to. To validate, you know, or or if you want to add your add in your add ID to our list, if you have used this form, we have contacted everybody who has sent so far. Uh, I have contacted personally all the persons who have submitted this case, and I actually asking for now for some fiddler traces on calling the REST APIs. So if you want to participate in the validation, please make sure to you know to to answer this survey. If you already did it and I already contacted you, it's no need to send it again. You know, but if, if this is news to you, uh, please send me send me communicate with me through this form, and then I will I will contact you and you know and you know verify that you are uh, covered. Uh, and then, well, the, obviously the advice here is move to the graph, move to the graph, move to the graph. The graph is going to be the future eventually. So please please share any issues you find. Uh, either if it's a graph scope, we haven't been identifying any scope issues, which which means that. Basically, everything that you have in the in the REST endpoint is available in the Graph API. Uh, so, it, and if you also have non-functional issues, like for example, if the perf is not good enough or significantly slower than REST, we want to know about it. So let, let's make sure to contact our team and and chat about it. All right. So that's the news. Uh, so I think it's good news for everybody. And the summary in a nutshell is that we're going to grant exceptions for everybody until October 14, 2025. So that's good. Now, many of you are sending a lot of questions. So David, I am I'm adding here some of that, those questions. Uh, I'm using a bit of the time here. Basically, quickly is that uh, when the Outlook REST API is decommissioned, where will be the programmatic way to confirm that the add-in, you know? Uh, OK, so people are asking, how are they going to be able to check you know, if the REST API is no longer available? And the answer to this question is that you, I mean, uh, there's an API that you need to call. If you look at my slides, previous slide here, you know, you, you get a get get callback token. This is the this is the API that you you need to use in order to get a REST API compatible token. Uh, one of the options that is accepted by this API is that is REST equals true. That's what makes the the API to return a token that is going to be compatible with the REST API endpoint. So basically, if you're using this syntax and you're requesting a REST token, we're going to fail that call. So this, this call is not going to be, uh, you're no longer going to be able to obtain that token and, and hence call uh, the endpoint, right? That's going to be the way to check it. So office context mailbox.rest URL most probably is going to be an empty property. Remember that every time you see a property in Office JS, it means that it was initialized when you loaded the item. So it's going to be initialized as empty as well, right? Right. So I answered that question. Solution for mobile. Mobile. You know, mobile. We have the problem because in mobile, we cannot. We don't have a very good alternative for the REST APIs because you cannot call it AWS. So uh, the recommendation that we have been giving for folks who are who have Outlook add-ins in mobile is to basically move the server calls to a server. And then from the server, you know, communicate with the graph. That is in general the approach. No, uh, right now we don't have a good answer on get callback token. So we, as part of, we have some more time to 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 offer a solution here. And um, my team is going to be working on trying to get an alternative to get callback token. You know, uh, uh, so that you can at least use AWS. No, but but again. Here, the workaround, unfortunately, is going to be move to the server and from the server, make the call. Uh, examples of how to use the Outlook Addings as an alternative of REST. Yes, and, uh, of course, we, we we haven't yet have a sample for this, but the idea is that we're going to have a sample showing, you know, the server side approach that I was uh, sharing with you. 
More mobile questions. How can we get documentation on guidance to update mobile adding to the work post to restrict? Well, we're going to have the documentation and guidance. Um, I already talked about this a little bit, you know, get access token for the graph isn't available. Yes, so that's why we are we are advising people to move, you know, to the um, to the server those calls while we create a more creative solution on the clients, right? Okay. The get and get attachment these are APIs that we are planning to also add in mobile. So maybe with the JavaScript directly, you're going to be able to fix this. And finally, using resting on prem, there's somebody that is saying that you know Exchange 2016, yes. So REST APIs are available in on prem. If you're in a hybrid configuration, so if you're in a hybrid configuration, the same applies. You know, it's going to be the commission on November November 22nd this year. And I think those are all the questions that I have. I hopefully I will give I will give giving more updates every month on this. So if you have additional questions, please let us know. Send your questions, and hopefully we can answer them uh, in the next community call. So. I think that's that's it, my content for for today, David. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. It was uh, great to see the update on the what's happening with the decommission. Imagine folks will be very happy about that.